First were the firestorms in California. Then I shot some video of the tornado damage near my home. All in all, a disturbing time. Are these events proof of global warming? Of course not. Responsible scientists will never certify individual events as proof of anything. But more than 1,400 top scientists are now crying out that the humanity's very survival is at stake if we don't change our ways. The United Nations has just issued its newest environmental audit. It says that we would need one-third more land than the Earth has now to support all the people alive today, let alone the billions soon on their way. Scientist James Havelock warns that global warming will hit sooner than we think and hit hard. In this month's Rolling Stone, he predicts that global warming will cut the Earth's population from today's 6.6 .6 billion people to 500 million people in less than 100 years. Think of it. A world where six out of every seven people alive today would simply disappear. Havelock sees a future where people slaughter each other, battling for a place to stand on, water to drink, food to eat. Havelock's the British genius who invented the Gaia theory. That's the idea that the Earth itself is a living entity that tries to heal itself from natural and man-made assaults. He says that the coming chaos is the Earth's way of ridding itself of an irritating species. That species is us humans. George Carlin says the Earth has good reason to shake us off like a bad case of fleas. The challenge with all this bad news, however, is to avoid utter despair. Back in April, during the training session in Nashville with Al Gore, he warned us that fear produces paralysis. If we want to save a spot for us humans on that little blue dot that is the Earth, we need to inspire people to make the right changes. As cities like Miami begin to flood, while cities like Phoenix and Las Vegas run out of water, people will look north. Those of us who have stayed in Michigan through thin and thinner will remember why we love the place so much and others will too. Michigan is a green state of still and rushing waters. Will we treat newcomers as people to be helped or as the enemy to repel? In his new book, Deep Economy, environmentalist Bill McKinnon writes, In a changed world, comfort will come less from ownership than from membership. If you're a functioning part of a community that can meet at least some of its needs, then you're more secure. Alienated upscale suburbs are simply no longer sustainable. It doesn't make sense to continue squandering finite resources on today's bargains when they simply become tomorrow's trash. Wouldn't you prefer to live in a place where parents help other parents raise the kids and the firm help ease the infirm into old age? I call it progressive survivalism. It's the choice between retreating into fortified bunkers armed to the teeth with guns or linking our arms together to care for ourselves, our families, our communities, our planet. The upcoming election offers us the chance to demonstrate that we have finally learned the right lessons from 9-11. 9-11 isn't about fighting terrorism or Islamofascism, and it certainly isn't about going shopping. The real lesson of 9-11 is that the world can change suddenly. If we don't start now, we will inevitably end up listening to another commission that tells us if only. If only we had invested in a sustainable future in time. It's time to vote your hopes, not your fears. We cannot continue to reward politicians who see the world as divided between us and them. Vote only for candidates who understand that the real challenge is to pull us together as one. If there isn't a good choice within the two parties, Either vote for a third-party candidate or run yourself. It's the status quo that's unsustainable.